Today we starting job where we will be transferring uh, this uh, tub shower combo for the fiberglass uh, unit to uh, mm, to shower with no curb that a, that a person uh, with any problems with moving can easily access. It will be uh, this, uh, especially designed for uh, easier accessibility. What we will do. We will uh, remove, of course, the existing fiberglass. We gonna also expand it this way, so it's larger, more convenient to use. We will move toilet a little bit, and we will uh, also replace this vanity with a smaller, most likely, uh, hanging sink uh, or pedestal sink to mm, to make a little bit more room, a little bit more space to maneuver inside of the bathroom. Uh, right now all you can see is just standard builders great uh, installation with a vinyl floor and uh, fiberglass uh, shower unit that is not really the best condition but this is what happens with those fiberglass showers after a while they discolorate the finish it's wearing, wearing off and uh, they are just not good looking at all so we will be replacing this one. We are also going to uh, tile walls about four feet high. So it's, the maintenance is easier. We will do all the waterproofing. We will lower subflooring uh, for about three and a half, four inches to build the pan uh, evenly with the level of the main floor. Um, and yes, there will be some grab bars installed as well. So this is how the bathroom lo looks right now. I will uh, keep you of course updated. Uh, so day one we slowly preparing. Homeowners are very excited. So yes, this is it. Another project with the towel master and just see how it will go. Okay, quick update from our project. Uh, we have uh, all the uh, old bathroom gone, everything been gutted, and we just finished uh, lowering the part of the subfloor under the shower because this is the you have to lower it for about three, three and a half inches to do all the waterproofing to build the pan uh, lower uh, from uh, main level. This is the main level of the floor, and the waterproofing and the, all the cement will go here and will uh, be three inches below so the final uh, so the final surface will be pretty much flesh with the existing flooring in the remaining part of the bathroom so what we did we uh, cut it out all the joists one two pretty much only two joists for three inches we have added uh, two by tens on the sides uh, to reinforce it um, we have also here another block on the back wall, also three inches lower from the original uh, uh, height of the floor. And here transition, because this is where the shower is gonna, the pen is gonna start transition from the uh, regular floor height to three, three and a half inches lower, which is here. So the new board will set here, 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 and here. This is the new plywood that we will put under the shower we relocated the drain uh, it used to be over there right now we have it here it's centered it's more against the back wall so most of the water will actually stay uh, here minimizing chances for water to escape uh, from the shower because there will be no curb so this is the case also important to for us to have enough room to do enough sloping to the drain so the water when building up will not pass the shower line and uh, yes, the toilet got relocated as well because remember this is the tight space and uh, we had we used to have tub over here which was 32 inches right now we're gonna have a shower 41 uh, inches wide so we adding another almost foot 10 inches so toilet got relocated here we've also relocated some other pipings 
and uh, slowly be putting back uh, subflooring so later we can focus on uh, doing the plumbing and rest of the preparation but yes so make sure everything is reinforced we have additional blocks we have everything uh, very solid very durable to the point where it will definitely uh, last and will do what it's supposed to do quick update from the project that we're working on right now uh, from the job where we uh, lowering the subfloor uh, to be able uh, to build a curbless shower I mean shower with no curb uh, very easy to access for any person on uh, with uh, difficulties in uh, walking or uh, of course uh, other situations that uh, might be difficult to raise the foot uh, to get to the shower so we already done with all the prep work to lower it uh, we have the subfloor already uh, put in back in place three and a half almost three and a half inches lower we relocated toilet we've relocated water line for the toilet we also have new shower valve in place and, uh, this is strange brand aqua source or something never have seen this one before but um but yeah so so I just finished this one and we have uh, this taken care of uh, the drain still in the center but pushed slightly back against the back wall uh, to keep most of the water uh, as far as we can from the transition where the, the pen liner is going to be and additional waterproofing I will be working on it tomorrow now show you what we do to waterproof this uh, this type of installation uh, to the point where it should be pretty safe to use it so this is it not really a lot of space here but it will be nice big shower and homeowners will definitely enjoy it so yeah talk to you later another day on our project uh, we focusing today on all the boards installation and uh, first part of waterproofing of course as a first to go as a uh, waterproofing component is our shower pen liner uh, and when working with a um, uh, curbless shower uh, other than waterproofing installing this uh, as a standard application we also have to uh, put at, le at least a little bit on the main flooring here uh, the pen liner we have we working with a, a six feet wide uh, pen liner it covers the, the floor of the shower and it all goes about foot and a half on the main floor uh, so in case any water getting a little bit farther and penetrating grout etc etc it still will kind of kind of help uh, any water that uh, might get there do not really get to the wood because this is the goal if the water will get to the under the tile to the cement board or just slightly above the tile it's not going to cause any problem any leakage uh, but once it gets to the wood this is where problems start so the goal is to waterproof it up obviously to not have uh, uh, any water accessing behind be, uh, under the underlayment and as you can see this is the way uh, here the pen liner wraps around this uh, step that we've been building here uh, we have this attached to the wall I already have first uh, cement board in place in this case on the bottom roll I will use cement board and on the top part I will use uh, dense guard uh, I'm using cement board simply because I will do this waterproofing slightly differently than usually we're gonna uh, pour a uh, uh, shower base shower pan to the cement board and then additionally waterproof everything with a red guard uh, so there will be no even any options to water leak anywhere so but you will see it uh, once I'll be moving farther with this project so the fir first thing pen liner here it appears to be also under the uh, toilet because the toilet been moved but because of the tight space it will be very close to the shower sp space uh, once again this is for person with uh, 
pretty much big difficulties in uh, walking so we want to make sure that we have this convenient for her so so this is it okay so we have all the boards in place on the walls uh, we holding up with the floor for now um, the next step for me to do here will be slowly start waterproofing uh, waterproofing with a red guard membrane liquid rubberized uh, membrane and the fiberglass mesh tape over there there will be more to use later once we have the floor in place once we have the shower pan finished there will be a bunch of more fiberglass tape needed to waterproof everything but at this point uh, I'm doing small prep and later today I will do the shower pan and main waterproofing the final waterproofing we will perform on Monday which will be two days from now so this is, this is it slowly getting there Quick update, uh, we at the process of uh, building shower pan, the shower base, uh, I'm of course using a concrete, I'm pre-mixing this in the buckets and just putting here already pre-mixed, um, it's of course step by step slow process to make sure everything is leveled, but the way it's done, in this case, what I did, I have the first lay of the door rock here being a quarter of an inch and then we have half inch continuing through the rest of the room uh, the reason for that uh, the shower tiles will start somewhere here but uh, I will have the first solid tile larger piece that is on a mm, as a first piece also slightly sloping so uh, I will build it up this slightly later with the tin set to make this uh, the smaller slope and here we will have a solid piece 12 by 12 already slightly sloping to the inside of the shower in case water will be building up too much uh, there's additional uh, space where it can stay in a shower area still so, uh, the cement as you can see this is the quarter inch sticks about uh, half an inch farther than the pen liner and I'm pretty much building out the cement evenly with that um, evenly with this quarter inch so later we will have nice smooth transition as you can see from the main level of the floor slowly to the shower that will of course continue sloping to the drain um, I'm in the middle of the job here uh, and uh, have still a little bit of left of course uh, the drain as I previous, previously mentioned is centered when you're walking in but it's pushed slightly against the back wall because uh, if the drain gets stuck or cloth or something will be blocking the drain the water will be building up mainly over there and uh, what I will do later once the pen is dry I will waterproof it additionally with the fiberglass tape and, um, and with the red guard on the seams, a little bit high on the wall and mostly entire floor, you will see it to make sure that everything is waterproof to the maximum so so this is it and well Peter got me another bucket so I have to continue Alright, uh, another day on the project uh, where we work in, when we're building a curbless shower uh, for a person with uh, difficulties in walking, uh, I would say almost a wheelchair accessible one and uh, as you've seen previously we've been uh, doing this from the scratch pretty much but we're at the point where we have already pen built, everything is 
pretty much uh, ready but not a hundred percent let me uh, show you additional steps uh, of uh, what to do or at least the way I'm doing it so we have the main floor that has been installed in a level we have uh, with a half inch uh, cement board here we've added a quarter inch cement board uh, so the first roll of tiles will be already going in an angle and um, and this is how the situation looks right now this is the main floor and here as you can see it will be sloping already slightly and then it will continue with the smaller tiles all the way to the pen the goal is to keep the water uh, in the shower area there will be no curb so there will be no uh, dam to keep the water inside so we have to have a little bit bigger slope uh, and have the part of the shower floor that is against the wall slightly lower so water eventually can start building up over there first before passing this line and as you can see the, the way we build the pen uh, it's uh, nicely sloping to the drain uh, if we would do level this is where the level appears to be so we have about an inch of a difference uh, in the and on the drain so we so water can pretty much build up about an inch if there will be something going on in the back part of the shower uh, of course giving homeowners enough time to drain the to clean the drain or to move if something will be blocking the drain to uh, remove it so water can easily drain and uh, yes so the way it's done of course the main slope is from the floor because here's the main area where the water might cause some damage if getting out of the control of course the pen also slopes from the corner as you can see we have also difference over there and it also shows nicely on the level if we do level the level appears to be something like this so we also have a matter about an inch and this is how it progresses pretty much from each side this is what we have if we look from the wall where we have a valve you see the difference here we will have a level and here is also nicely everything sloping and same situation over there so the water stays inside this is the key to the success to have enough sloping enough room for water to collect in a showering space because uh, you never know when something might get to the drain maybe too much hair maybe towel maybe something especially with a person has problems in movement uh, might not be able to remove it right away so this way we have enough time to act and uh, clear the space so such installations are extremely tricky and have to be done with the precision and focus to any even smallest detail so so this is it but uh, we're not ready to tile yet I mean we have all the boards on the walls and uh, we have cement already dry nicely prepped very smooth uh, from each angle to uh, to tile we have underlayment over here but uh, of course uh, additional waterproofing is still uh, remaining so it will be something that I will work in a, mom on a, in a moment but before we do any tile installation or a red guard on the floor uh, we have to finish preparing surface uh, to of course have the uh, red guard holding the way it's supposed to, to the underlayment to the pen we have to focus on preparing surface and I have everything of course uh, wiped uh, the cleaned vacuumed so there's no any dust residues pretty much on the floor that's very important but what I like to do on such projects and not only uh, on pretty much each time uh, there's a need I'm preparing a surface before tiling with this primer this is this one this is latex primer this one is designed to uh, be used with a leveling compound to, mm, to make 
uh, leveling compound uh, bonding to the under element even way better. It can be easily used uh, for tin set installation. If we go to install red guard, we can also prime it with this uh, primer. It works perfect. It will remove every single small uh, when applying this. It will remove uh, every single small piece of dust from the floor. Uh, plus, additionally, it uh, like I said improves uh, bonding uh, to the underlayment. This way we have perfect preparation accomplished for either tile installation or uh, waterproofing, uh, waterproofing installation. So this latex primer it's something that I will apply on the cement board, on the shower pan and a little bit on the walls because we will waterproof the uh, wall as well about 5-6 inches uh, high. And the way you we applying this, this is it, it comes of course as liquid. So I'm gonna pour this to the bucket, and I will be applying this with a roller, right? We have this roller, and we're going to apply on the entire floor, every uh, square uh, inch, uh, everywhere where we will be tiling uh, and applying the red guard. So this is something I'm going to start working on right now. Yeah, so I have this already in the bucket, uh, this primer, and the way I'm applying it, it's pretty much all the entire surface. It dries pretty fast, so you can definitely follow up with waterproofing or, or installation the same day. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to, to dry, but this way we have way better bonding. And I mean, this is the goal for us to have everything holding the way it's supposed to, because if we will not prepare surface, correctly, no matter what we will do, either tiles or, or uh, a waterproofing membrane might not bond the way it's supposed to and some tiles might eventually get loosed uh, and grout start cracking etc etc. There's not really any type of specific code that needs to be done, just make sure you've reached the surface uh, it's just one coat pretty much. Uh, we prepare everything correctly. So we pretty much will follow this everywhere where we will be doing the waterproofing membrane. As you can see, of course, the shower is the main area because this is where most of the water will be ending up but I will also do it on the remaining part of the floor because we gonna also waterproof the rest of the floor just in case uh, we have water actually coming out too far so we have to be ready for even the worst case scenario when it comes to poorless showers so, so this is how it goes. And I will continue this of course on the entire floor, on the entire surface. The red guard is a pretty good product, not only red guard but any type of waterproofing membrane. If we will apply it on the drywall, it makes drywall water resistant because water will not penetrate the uh, membrane. Here we have remaining parts of the drywall. Water will be hardly getting there here, but um, but everything that where we be waterproofing will be painted with the red guard, and it's 100% waterproof formula. So this is it.
second layer. The red guard, the waterproofing that I will be showing you in a few moments, will go about six inches high. That's plenty uh, to make sure water will not cause any damage. Okay, before uh, we will start with waterproofing, what I'm going to do, you see this area that is low, lower over here with a quarter inch board, I'm going to make a smooth, nice transition uh, to the higher area. And what I will do, I'm using more tinted, I'm using the fast drying, drying one because you have to move forward with the job. But you can use, if you have more time, you can definitely use this regular tinted. Uh, and I'm going to do this additional transition before applying waterproofing. So the waterproofing will be applied on nicely sloping surface, right? So before doing waterproofing, I'm going finishing this nicely. smooth transition to all the way to the, to the shower drain so water can easily go where it's supposed to go right now I'm gonna let it dry and directly on top of that surface we will start waterproofing, doing the final waterproofing in a, about maybe 15 to 20 minutes because this is how long uh, we might have to wait for this uh, compound to dry. 